Order 66 brought the Jedi Order tumbling down at the hands of Darth Sidious. However, there were those outside the Sith who relished in the downfall of the Jedi. But who supported Order 66? I actually knew the Jedi. Not from the pages of folklore or children's tales, but as flesh and blood. And do you know what happened to them? Well, there were rumours. They died. Every last one of them. So you see, this criminal cannot be what he claims to be. And I shall prove it. The most important thing to understand with this is that the Jedi weren't actually as largely liked as you may believe, especially towards the end of the Republic. Of course, not fully supporting the Jedi and supporting their end are very different, so who were their main adversaries? Firstly, there was huge amounts of galactic officials, senators, governors, members of dynasties, they developed a distaste for the Jedi and always really had one. You see, the Jedi work with somewhat impunity. An example of this is how Obi-Wan Kenobi interfered with the Mandalorian Civil War. Technically, that was an independent internal affair, and for the Jedi to become involved, it could be seen as them tampering things that didn't concern them. Their duty as galactic peacekeepers was somewhat undermining the galactic elite's power at this point. Let's say that you're a governor of a system and said system has a spice problem. Now you have a police force and you try to stop the issue, but then some Jedi comes along and solves the problem for you. You look weak, and it looks like your government can't do its job properly. You see, many of these politicians preferred order and conformity. They would rather have a police force under their control as opposed to a maverick Jedi who answered to only themselves and a few off-world senators. As well as politicians, we also have criminals, and for pretty similar reasons. Since Jedi didn't really act with any conformity and almost limitless bounds, they were not as easy to outsmart. However, the Empire was very different. Granted, they were incredibly strict when it came to upholding the law, but their rules and regulations made them predictable and easier to outsmart. For this reason, during the height of the Empire, criminal organisations appeared to prosper. Not only because many of the nefarious deeds they committed, such as slavery, were now seen as legal, but because the Empire was so obsessed with conformity that criminal syndicates found it easy to work around them. Finally, and probably most importantly, we have the Republic military. Now, I'm not on about the clones, they were pretty much unopinionated on the matter, but GAR command, admirals of fleets, etc. Throughout the war, the Jedi had acted as generals, a title that may have supported their prowess in combat, but not their experience. The Jedi were peacekeepers at the end of the day, not tacticians, and for them to be given command over forces could be seen to many high-ranking military members as a bit of an insult. The colonels and admirals had dedicated much of their lives to the Republic military, spending decades perfecting tactics and mastering the art of war, and just as the Republic truly needed them, when the threat was at its greatest, the Jedi are thrust into the ranks and now they have to share their authority with them. The Jedi are great warriors, no one would think about questioning that, but they're spontaneous, they didn't always follow orders, and most importantly, they improvise. And doing this with these Admirals carefully thought out plans can compromise their mission, and can make the Admirals look bad in the process. The Admirals wanted procedures and a rigid chain of command, and they valued the Jedi's skill in battle, and they saw them as a very valuable asset, which they were, but they wanted them as a weapon, not as commanders, and definitely not as equals. It's easy to see how there could be animosity between these high-ranking military leaders when they're ordered to work alongside what are essentially maverick peacekeepers. Ultimately, when Order 66 happened, many did benefit without the Jedi's input around the galaxy, but who do you think benefited the most from Order 66? Thanks for watching, please like and sub if you did enjoy, because it really means a lot and helps the channel grow. Also, follow me on Twitter at TheLawGuy for the regular updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.